I was a big fan of Dusty Springfield, and I, and I remember she, she reading an article about from her, I mean, I was about 12, 13, and saying how she loved being on the road and living out of a suitcase, and I thought, well, that sounds good, you know. And, I, and um, so this was what I was doing, and the kind of music that I was doing, and the, 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 the sort of arena that was open to me. So I went to London and found myself a manager after a couple of years, I think, of this, I think, because I was about 15 by the time I, I met Roy Guest. And then he, I played and sang some of my own songs to him, and he liked that and said um, that he would mastermind my career. And so I was still at school and went to college and I discovered drama. And Roy was also managing um, Al Stewart and John Cameron, who was Donovan's arranger. And through John Cameron, I met Donovan, who I was also a big fan of. And, and he, uh, he and I became very close for a while, and I was also, also, you know, J John Cameron became my my boyfriend for a, for a brief while, and then he became the musical arranger for he he wrote all the scores for Les Mis much mm. later on. So he's yes. he's well known for that. But I mean, he did one. He was doing wonderful stuff for um, Donovan with Sunshine Superman, and and then we went down to the studio where Donovan was recording, and then. Our eyes, Donovan and I, so we sort of locked eyes across the studio, and this interesting creature in this shaggy coat and dark curls, and and um, I knew who he was and everything, but he seemed to notice me, and, and we went down to his cottage and used to hang out, and you know, it was all you know, for a little girl from Essex. It mm. was all very, all very romantic, and uh, you know, all because I, I, I had, got, had this this manager who sort of. So I could mingle with all these people who, um, you know, Al Stewart be became a really good friend. And then when I came up to college in, uh, when I was 18 in London, I mean, I'd, I'd been coming up and down. I'd actually sung at the Marquee already with a band called the Piccadilly Line. I did that when I was 15, 16 as well. I'd come up and some, somehow I'd met these, these boys and learned some of their songs. And, and so this was a band. It was the first actual band that I, that wasn't a, this wasn't a folk band, they were like a pop band. And um, so I did a, a gig at the Marquee Club in Wardour Street. I saw um, Paul Jones, Manfred Mann yes, band. Yeah. I saw them play there several times, and The Who played down there. And so I, mean, so I, had, I, had, I had a sort of a side interest in sort of pop music. From, from Dusty Springfield, I became interested in blues and rhythm and blues and all that sort of thing. Mm. So, so as well as the kind of the songs which I could play and sing, um, I was interested in, in more rocky things. And um, so when I came to college, I st started going out to different clubs, going down to the Speakeasy, and I, I met there I met Brian Jones and Jimi Hendrix and all the, these people. And, and um, don't ask me how I got in, but I did. <laughs> and, and I went, we, you know, we went, we went, my, my, my girlfriend, we went back to Brian Jones's house and listened to him talking about his time and with the p pipes of Jujuka and mm -hmm. both Brian and Donovan were people who I felt very close to um, as a young girl. You know, they were still kind of, you know, demigods when I was a mere handmaid. Mm -hmm. 